I, I want to talk about um, an unnamed sponsor of this event. And it's something of which we are inordinately proud um, at the Ad Association, and it's called Frontfoot. Uh, and Frontfoot, as you know, and most of you, I think, here are members uh, of the Frontfoot Initiative. Um, <clears throat> its first chairman, Amanda McKenzie, now of the great Project Everyone Initiative is here, and Matt Barwell also, who is the current chairman of Frontfoot. And Frontfoot gave us Kratos. Kratos is advertising's think tank led by Karen Fraser, chaired by James Best and, and with Karen's new recruit, Deputy Dan Wilkes. And, De and Dan has produced um, a, a study which is in your goodie bags today. Um, Karen, of course, has given us the Ad Pays seri series. Those of you who are at the parliamentary reception will know that we got to Ad Pays 4, which is about balance of payments, and you'll see that coming out more in 2016 as we get, uh, as, as, as we position our role in the whole UK export initiative. Um, this latest offering is called State of the Nation. Um, and it, uh, what you have in your, in your bags is just a, a, a headline report. Uh, it's got a, quite a journey to travel within AA Council, board, uh, etc. cetera. Um, and uh, it's a study which involves 200, sorry, 2,000 members of the public, 150 MPs, 330 leaders from the industry itself, uh, and, um, and 10 depth uh, interviews from some of you who are actually here in this room. So let's have a quick look uh, at what you actually said. So some great inputs there, and, uh, and thank you to everybody who took part in this study. Um, I can't possibly do the headlines justice here, and as I said, they're gonna be picked up and discussed at length at Front Foot Board, AA Board, count, Council, etc. But three headlines that you might like to take away and, uh, and reflect on today. Headline number one, um, we probably need to stop beating up on ourselves quite so much. We are actually rather more insecure and defensive about our activity and what we do um, than, the other, than other people, the public and the political community see us. That's quite, quite a tough finding. And as far as you, the leaders of the industry, are concerned, we simply cannot leave the next generation within our own businesses as stranded as they are and as they feel on the moral purpose and the value of all that we do for the economy, for society, for people and for business. Uh, and then the third uh, area, um, which I think will come to the forum, is particularly relevant when I welcome our next speaker onto the, onto the stage, uh, is as you've got an insight there, the battleground on which our value exchange uh, depends will be fought in particular online and where we are using people's data. And one of the other initiatives coming out of the AA this year has been, and as a consequence of, of Christopher Graham actually coming and speaking to the AA Council, uh, is the setting up of, um, of, of, of a, a working group under Chris Cumbermal of the, of the DMA um, about, uh, to do with the responsible use of data for advertising. So it's right up there um, uh, on our list, uh, which now neatly takes us on to, uh, to uh, our, our next guest, the Information Commissioner, Christopher Graham. Many of you know him. You know that before Guy Parker, he was the Director General of the Advertising Standards Authority, so he's a friend to our industry. So we're gonna ask, ask him to address a single question. If advertising wants to be seen to be more responsible, what does that mean when it comes to data, Chris? Tim, uh, thank you. Um, I'm Christopher Graham. I'm the UK Information Commissioner. Seven years ago, I was Guy Parker. Um, and I started as the Director General of the Advertising Standards Authority on the 2nd of April, 2007. But for seven years, I've been doing something else. Tim's described me as a friend to the industry. I think I would say a candid friend, and I've got some home truths to share with you. But I must say, it feels like I've never been away, because I read this, this week that French Connection uh, is rerunning the FC UK campaign, and that's what was happening when I started off at the Advertising Standards Authority. So it's back to the future. 
and it's back to the basic questions of reputation and responsibility. But perhaps in a new space, uh, the question of data and trust and data protection. And let me begin by saying happy European Data Protection Day, because the 28th of January is, I know you know this, but the 28th of January is celebrated each year as European Data Protection Day. It's the anniversary of the opening of Convention 108 of the Council of Europe, I know you knew that as well, which is the foundation for the European Directive on the Protection of Personal Information, and that's the foundation for the Data Protection Act. Four years ago, almost to the day, the then commissioner, Vivian Redding, unveiled the draft General Data Protection Regulation. And four years later, we're almost at the finishing line. But the finishing line is actually the starting line because we've then got two years to transfer to a new regime which is clearer, stricter, and applies uniformly across the EU28. And one point I'd like you to focus on. As the Information Commissioner regulating uh, data and data protection, I have the power to impose civil monetary penalties of up to half a million pounds. And that causes problems for brands, and the headlines aren't welcome. Well, under the new rules, coming into force in the middle of 2018, data protection authorities like mine will have the power to impose civil monetary penalties of up to, wait for it, 20 million euros, or up to 4% of global turnover, whichever is the greater. Now you're going to sit up and pay, pay notice. And a question which I would ask, and I can't do it electronically because I didn't give notice of this, and I can't see you, so I won't see what the result is, but just, just think. What is going to drive responsible compliance with data protection obligations? Fear of the regulator or fear of losing consumer trust? Because this stuff matters. We talk about the tremendous opportunities of digital but think also of the tremendous risks. All that data, where it's personal data, it's not yours to do what you like with. And it's not just me saying that. People care. This week, to mark European Data Protection Day, we commissioned on the, the YouGov survey some questions about how consumers feel about the way that companies manage their data. And the message is that companies that fail to keep personal data safe risk long-lasting reputational damage that can impact on the future success of the business. Am I talking your language? The YouGov poll shows that nearly eight out of 10 people would think twice, and that's putting it mildly, about giving their custom to an online company that had made headlines for failing to stop a data security breach. And companies that play fast and loose with people's personal information risk the wrath of the ICO, and that means fines of up to half a million pounds. And a heavy fine is bad enough, but the time, energy, and money it takes to rebuild consumer confidence can be as severe a punishment as the fine itself. Uh, we commissioned that YouGov poll, uh, 2,000 respondents. It showed that 20% of people would definitely stop using a company's services after hearing news of a data breach, after hearing news of a data breach. 57% would consider stopping. So 20% would definitely stop. 57% would definitely consider stopping. We found only 8% said that such coverage would make no difference. And 14% said they didn't know. So the knock-on effect of a data breach can be devastating 
for a company. Getting hit with a fine is one thing, but when customers start taking their business and their money elsewhere, that's the real body blow. So keeping personal information secure is just part of the picture because we also found that 95% of those polled by YouGov said it was very or fairly important that customers were clear from the outset about how their personal information was going to be used. And 94% deemed it very or fairly important that their information was not shared with other companies. So it's clear that people care about what happens to their personal information. Getting it right is not only an obligation under the law, but it must be central to an organization's reputation management. And that, after all, is the business that you're in, is it not? We know that in 1962, the advertising business faced a threat from the consumer movement, and it had to organize itself into the defense of commercial free speech. That's where the Advertising Standards Authority came from. Now there's a new threat to trust in organizations and brands, and it's about data protection, or rather, the lack of it. And I'm here because this is an issue that requires leadership at the top of an organization. If you think, how could you possibly imagine that the reputations of big national charities would have been so trashed by issues around the way that their fundraising operations were using data. A big company like TalkTalk Talk is counting the cost because of all the coverage of the uh, security breach which we're, we're currently investigating. So opportunities, yes, but risks too, and risks that need to be mitigated. So it's not something to leave to the IT guy down the corridor. If you want all the benefits of digital, you manage the risks. It's there on your risk register. It's managed by the board. It's the responsibility of the chief executive. Problems enough in two years with the new rules, and we'll help the industry to get there, but problems immediately now with your customers uh, if you're not handling it the right way. So the issue is not what could you do with all that data, but what, what should you do if in the battle for trust, the responsible brands are going to be the winners. How can you make sure that yours are the responsible brands? And it's, it's not just a problem for advertisers. It's about the advertising industry as a whole. Because what's got the industry into trouble is the way in which their messages have been communicated and not communicated. It's as a classic of shoot the messenger. Marshall McLuhan famously said that the medium is the message. I would say, in this case, the medium is very often the issue. Look at nuisance calls and spam. Uh, the behavior of some uh, in the direct marketing business spoils it for everyone else. And you could say the same about people who are not thinking through how they exploit big data, how they profile customers. It's been said to me that data, thinking about opportunities, that data is the new oil. Somebody else said, yeah, but it's also the new asbestos. Opportunities, risks. One might say data is the new sugar, in view of what we, we heard this morning. Now, lest you fear that um, this is just another regulator coming and waving the the big stick. Let me explain that the approach of the UK regulator, the information commissioner, is, is very much to be as a partner with um, data controllers. Provided you're seriously thinking about balancing opportunities and risks, conducting proper privacy impact assessments and so on, the ICO can be a, a partner because we want to be an enabler of good things to happen. Uh, if, if, uh, if we have more joined up delivery of services, we have more targeted delivery of services in, in the public sector, it can solve many problems of, of public policy. So we're not just there to enforce. I talk about the, the, the five uh, E's 
enforcement, but also education, empowerment, uh, enabling and engaging with the real world. That's why I'm here. So don't get fixated about the civil monetary penalties. Think about the consequences of the civil monetary penalties and your customers walking away, whether it's half a million pounds uh, or, or whether it's 20 million euros. The fine is not your problem. The, the response of your customers is. So I would suggest to you the challenge for leadership in this industry is to respond to what consumers are saying and thinking about brands and the methods to promote brands. Uh, that is your business. Data protection is not some geeky thing for somebody else to worry about. It's something for you to worry about and for you to take responsibility. Thank you very much. All right. Yeah, yeah. So, so thank you very much indeed, uh, Christopher Graham, for you know, some fairly tough words there. We're going to do a poll, right? And the great, great news about the poll is there's anonymity, so you can say what you really, really think. So poll number one is thinking about your own company. Are you getting it right when managing and using people's data? Yes, no, or I don't know. So quite a degree of confidence there, Chris, yeah? yeah. Not bad, yeah. but some who feel that... Well, we, I just, I just we, hope it isn't overconfidence. Yeah, abs absolutely, okay. And a second question. What about the rest of us? Come on, as a business, are we getting it right with people and their data? Is this adding to our trust or detracting from it? Get the votes counted now. Oh, wow, there we are. So we're doing it right. Yeah. Back, back with me, it's but maybe as an industry. <laughs> Off we go again. Thank you so much, Thank Christopher Gray. Thank you. Thank you.